Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. It is early days, says investigator in Portland double murder. Following the double murder of Shade Pink and Kino James in Portland on Tuesday, Superintendent Lloyd Darby, commanding officer for the parish, says it is early days as they pursue various leads. Speaking to Porters, Darby said, it is a sad day for Portland. The female victim was in an advanced stage of pregnancy that adds to the distress that her family, who resides very near to the scene, are experiencing. Pink 28 and James 23 were reportedly among a group of people playing domino around 11 p.m. when a car drove up. One man then exited the wheel of the motor car, armed with a handgun and opened fire hitting both individuals. They were both rushed to the Port Antonio Hospital, where they were pronounced dead. We are following all the investigative leads, and it is too early to confirm any of them, but we are doing all that is necessary in terms of crime scene, scientific evidence, and eyewitnesses to see if we can really solve this murder. We are also noting that the female was the target of this attack, so we are focusing on investigation around the female. We are asking anyone with information to pass it on to the police. My number is 876-517-0087. CIB 876-322-9263 or Port Antonio Police Station at 876-322-9368 as we work together to solve this heinous crime, Darby continued. The double murder pushed the murder tally in the parish to five. On Wednesday, when reporters visited Campbell's Avenue and Alfred Lane, where Pink and Dreams are from, the air was shunned in gloom. There was also a strong police presence along with personnel from the restorative justice pastors and counselors. One of Pinky's relatives described her as kind and loving. She died leaving her daughter. She was so loving and kind, and she was instrumental during COVID with the plane of dominoes at the corner, Campbell Avenue and Alfred Lane, and the jerkin. They just come and kill her so. Oh God, we'll leave it to you. When they all go out there and it start to rain, they would just run in and shelter, and as ease of this, they had gone out to play, a grieving family member remarked. At the Monte General meeting of the Portland Municipal Corporation on May 11, Darby had reported that the murders in the parish were at three compared to four last year at that time. I am healthy and fine, leeching a lace fear, explains leave of absence from NCB. Jamaican Canadian billionaire Michael Leachin on Wednesday sought to allay fears about his health following the announcement that he is taking a leave of absence from the boards of the NCB Financial Group. In a press release, NCB Financial Group said the leave of absence is to allow Lee Chin to focus on certain pressing business and personal matters, and it is anticipated that it will last approximately three months. Speaking to reporters, Lee Chin, who appeared to be in good spirit, said there had been an odd point of concern that he may be sick because of the reference to personal matters in the release. Let me just make it clear, I went to the gym this morning, and I was leg to press 300 pounds. I did one and a half hour of working out, so my health is fine, I am greatly Jin said laughing. In explaining what he said were the reasons for his absence, Lee Jin cited his oncology and nuclear projects, noting that they were at a critical stage where they need specific focus. He also noted that a CEO resigned at one of his companies in Canada, and he was assuming the responsibility until he finds a replacement. Those are the main reasons NCB is in fantastic hands. It has been well managed throughout the last 20 years, and I thought I don't need to be there for the next three months, Lee Chin stated. Man convicted for killing his father. A man who stabbed his father to death during a dispute over empty bottles has been convicted of manslaughter. Dennis Brown Jr. was found guilty in an anonymous verdict handed down by a jury in the Home Circuit Court on Wednesday. He is scheduled to be sentenced on July 7. Dennis Brown Sr. died at hospital in April 2020 after he was stabbed at his home on Adman Lane in St. Andrew by his son, who had accused him of stealing empty bottles he was saving. President C. Brown Sr., who was a tiler, was saving the bottles for the anticipated showdown in work due to the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Because of COVID-19, persons are not allowing anyone in their homes right now, so he would save them to sell at a later date. But his son came and took out a portion of them, so that's where everything stemmed from, one resident told reporters. 
Port Martin charged with brother's murder. The Portmore police have charged a 15-year-old boy for the stabbing death of his brother at their home in Bridgeport. The teen was arrested and charged after a question and answer session in the presence of his attorney. A court date for him is being finalized. The police report that on Saturday, May 20, the brothers were at home and an argument developed between them. It is alleged that the 15-year-old stabbed his brother. He was assisted to hospital, where he died while being treated. Two charged over St. Andrew Concedure Two people were arrested and charged on Monday in connection with the recovery of an illegal gun on Berkeley in St. Andrew. Charged with possession of prohibited weapon and possession of ammunition are 28-year-old Ricardo Gould, otherwise called Ricky, and 37-year-old Tiffany Gould, otherwise called Judy, both of Berkeley in. Their court date is being finalized. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that about 5.30 a.m., a team armed with a search warrant carried out an operation at the home of both accused. During the search, a room was struck and a clear plastic bag containing a Roger .45 pistol with a magazine affixed containing five forty cartridges was found, according to the police. Both accused were taken into custody and were later charged. Come talk with us, Finance Minister tells JTA of the public sector unions. Finance and Public Service Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has argued that the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, appears more interested in talking to the media than engaging his ministry on concerns about abnormalities in the wage reform for public sector workers. Earlier this month, JTA President Lassandra Harrison said that the association wrote to the ministry about the incorrect salaries of scores of teachers, but to date, there has been no response. She said the bulk of teachers affected are those who have given between 25 and 40 years of service to the sector. To turn a deaf ear could only lead one to conclude that the experienced outcomes were intended, she said in another May statement. However, on Wednesday, Clark speaking at a post-cabinet press briefing had a different tune, saying he and the finance ministry have not been available to meet to discuss any abnormalities through a grieves union representing public sector workers or more interested in talking to the media than to the Minister of Finance. I don't think that Lassandra Harrison has to date pick up any kind of correspondence with the Minister of Finance. All she's out there doing is talking to the media. We're here and ready to engage on any abnormalities that exist. And we have meetings set up to address some of the systematic issues, he said, referring to the JTA president. A teacher who wrote reporters recently said that she received a net salary of 724 in March after the Education Ministry insisted that she was being overpaid. The guidance counselor who teaches at the secondary level said that she thought the matter would have been addressed the following month, but to her surprise, she was paid only $1,200 in April. She disclosed in a follow-up that $106,000 was withdrawn from her salary to recoup the overpaid amount. Clark said public sector compensation changes, which include the abortion of outstanding allowances in basic pay, is complicated and would involve some challenges. You don't make a transformable change like this. This is not a salary increase. This is a complete transformational change in the compensation framework for over 110,000 persons in the public sector. You don't make that kind of transformation without there being abnormalities, especially with the complicated nature of the system that we're coming from. He said the problems are in the minority but will be addressed. Last week, the Jamaica Civil Service Association, which represents the bulk of government workers, said the announcement must hike for politicians do not sit well with our membership, consequent to the numerous unsolved abnormalities. In point to concern about the suspension of increments, removal of duty allowance, mileage payments, contract workers who are yet to have adjustment to their salaries, and a push for an increase in income tax threshold. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.